Hi everyone and welcome back to Art with Mrs. S. Today we're going to be doing some drawing um, after looking at Yayoi Kusama's pumpkins in her dot art. We'll be drawing a pumpkin today and then we're also going to be painting. So we're going to be painting with watercolors and we're going to be using our complementary colors when we're doing our painting. Just as a reminder, complementary colors are those colors across from each other on the color wheel such as red and green, yellow and purple, and blue and orange. And we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to be using a black crayon today. If you're not very confident in your drawing or you just like to erase and make things as best as you can, you could use a pencil first and then outline in crayon, but I'm going to go ahead and dive in with my crayon today. I'm going to be making one large pumpkin, and to get my pumpkin started today, I'm just going to draw something that looks like the letter C. When you're done drawing that half of your pumpkin, I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. It kind of looks like a backward C or these kind of elephant ears going on in my picture. Then what I like to do to connect this to make it more like a pumpkin, at the top where I started that first C, I'm going to do a couple bumps or curves or wavy lines. Three, looks like four. It's kind of like making an M or some bat wings or some upside down waves. I also call them my McDonald's golden arches. Now on the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing but reverse those waves. This time it'll be more of like a curved W. Let's go W, 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 and W. It doesn't have to be the same amount on the top as it is on the bottom. Maybe you like your pumpkin to be more flat or smooth and it's a more rounded pumpkin. You don't have to even add those bumps in that way. After I add in those bumps, I'm going to go ahead and connect my curvy lines down. So if you had an odd number, it might look a little different than mine. Sometimes it connects where it doesn't curve. If you are using a pencil, don't press too hard so you can trace over top. If you're using a crayon though, I'm pressing really hard so my lines are dark. They're really bold, just like a lot of Yayoi Kusama's art. And that way when I go to paint, it's a lot, um, a lot easier to see those paint colors. At the top of my pumpkin, I'm going to create a stem. To do that, I kind of curve up, over, and curve back down. If you want your pumpkin to have kind of this crazy um, curly stem, that's fine. Um, if you want it to be skinnier than mine, that's fine as well. The next couple things, I'm going to add a line in the background so that it looks like my pumpkin's sitting on something. If you want to add in stems, um, the vines on there or leaves, you may do that. Yayoi Kusama left a lot of those out because she liked those bold details. And we're going to start adding in some of our dots throughout the insides of these lines. You can do large dots or circles all the way down. And it's always nice to kind of create a pattern. So if I'm doing large dots in here, I might skip one and then do large dots again all the way down. You can do dots inside of other dots. It's really up to you. I could go back in and color in some of these dots to have more black. And now I have that nice pattern of circle, no circle, circle, no circle, circle, no circle. I'm going to go in and add some smaller dots in those in-between ones. Got an AB pattern going. And I am using my crayon so I can easily fill those in. I'm trying to press hard. Sometimes it hurts your hand a little bit. Give your hand a break if it hurts. I'm going to skip those ones. Go back in to the other row. Making those similar dots. Notice I'm not too worried. You know, are they all the same? Are they all perfect? Are they all even? I'm just trying to keep them a similar size. You could go small to big all the way down. You kind of have to play around with what you like in your art, what your style is, what your design is going to be. All the way down. 
She's commonly used lots of dots in all of her art, so I'm going to be using lots of dots today. I also have the background to consider and the stem. You know, what am I going to do on the stem? What am I going to do in the background? How am I going to use those dots to make my art more interesting? So I'm going to go ahead on the stem. I might go ahead and do some small dots. And just kind of randomly scatter these around with a nice variety. You don't have to do the dots on this if you want to change that. And then I'm looking at the background. I don't have to do a design on all of the background, but you might want to look at how do I want to do those dots so I know that this is kind of the ground and this is maybe the sky above that horizon there. So I may do even a different variety of dots or create a different pattern in the background. So I'm going to do some big dots. <laughs> and these dots are going to be a little different than what was inside of the pumpkin, so I can determine the difference between those. And then my, my pumpkin doesn't really hide then in that background. So I'm doing that nice variety of circles or ovals in the background, those dots. Now filling in my bubbles or parts of a shell. Kind of cram those in there until that whole background is full. If your variety of shapes uh, or sizes of your dots and the style you chose makes it difficult to tell the difference between your pumpkin and the background, when you go to add color, that can make a huge difference too. And I'm just going to leave my pumpkin just like that. So I'm going to leave some plain down here. I used a variety of dots colored in, a variety of sizes of dots. And now my pumpkin is ready to be painted. We are, again, using complementary colors. So I need to kind of start deciding, do I want to use red and green? Do I want to use yellow and purple? Do I want to use blue and orange? So I'm using watercolors today. Here's my watercolors. I think I'm going to do uh, blue and orange just because I really like those colors and then orange of course is, reminds me more of a pumpkin but you don't have to use those and then black is also going to be a part of your design with that black crayon I also have with me my watercolor so I have my tray I have my cup of water and I have my watercolor brush I'm going to open this up and get started and I'm going to go ahead and do blue first it's really hard to start thinking of things more abstract because I would really want this pumpkin in my head to be orange, right? But it's going to get changed. I'm going to be using that combination of blue and orange. Remember to always treat your art materials kind. Making sure I'm not squishing my brush too hard. If I need more water, if it's not smooth, I'm dipping my brush again. I'm not pressing super hard inside of that watercolor paint, so I'm not ruining my paint. I can fill in. I'm going to still kind of keep this organized a bit. I don't want it completely crazy. White is also going to be a part of my design. So now that gives me white and black, and I'm also going to be using those complements, orange and blue so I can kind of start looking at this maybe I'm going to do the stem blue so that it's not touching other parts of my design that I'm choosing to use in those colors and I'm going very quickly you don't have to go this fast take your time fill in those lines you'll notice if you pressed hard enough with that black crayon when you paint over top of it that wax resists that water and I can still see the black and the color that I'm painting with that watercolor. I'm going to switch over to some uh, orange right now so I'm going to clean my brush really good dip inside and side get all that water off so that when I go into my orange I don't have that blue in there and I don't make those gross colors. Do this side orange. Notice I'm using the flat side of my brush when I have those big areas to color. 
my kind of the tip of the point of my brush when I get along the sides or in those smaller spaces. Keep going until I fill all my design. Again, you don't have to color everything, especially when you're only using a limited amount of colors. You may not paint everything because you don't want orange next to orange, or you may not want blue right next to blue. You have to decide what you're using to wear. This is how I'm choosing to decide my art, but it can change it. I'm going to do this whole bottom part blue, so I'm going to go ahead and clean my brush out again. Go back to the blue and fill in this whole bottom then. You decide when you're working on this, if you don't like how much space you have, you could go back and draw some more inside there. Notice I didn't draw a lot of extra little details. I didn't make this realistic. I didn't add it in like a pumpkin patch. I did not add a fence. I kept it very abstract, just like Kusama, and did all dots, all those bold lines, and the rest color is going to be filling in and doing the work for us. We'll keep going, getting right up to those edges of the crayon, filling all of those spaces, not scribble scrabbling with my paintbrush. I'm constantly going back to the water, getting more paint, water, getting more paint, but not too much. Once you kind of get that nice puddle forming in your paint, you don't need to keep getting water and water and water, it'll just wash off all your paint. We don't want to do that, we don't want to waste our paint. whole bottom is full. The last thing I'm going to do, I might do a couple oranges back up here, so I'm going to clean my brush again and dip back in my orange. I'm going to kind of go back and forth randomly. If you want, you could do the background of these. You could do a nice combination of two colors. You could fill in some of them black. I'm going to keep painting here. Not really how, there's no rhyme or reason. Random, kind of skipping a couple here and there until some are next to each other, some are more spread out. Okay, I want to go in and switch over now to black. So I use black crayon. And now I can fill in some of my bigger dots with black paint so that I'm not sitting there and coloring all of them with crayon. I like to save black to last when I'm painting because even when I wash my brush out and clean my brush out, it can still make my water kind of kind of cloudy and then suddenly all my colors are this kind of brown, dark color. If I want to add in, I might just go ahead and add a couple blue. So I clean my brush out really good, especially after using that black. My water is starting to get kind of dirty, so I want to make sure I'm using up all that paint before I dip my brush in there. Look how quickly I can fill in these big circles, these big ovals with my brush. I'm going to leave a couple of them out here. Well, I just have two more. Now when you're all done with painting your pumpkin and your dots and it's full and it's bright and it's bold and you're done, don't forget to take a picture of your art and post it to your Padlet page. Um, sometimes it's nice to let it dry and always put your first, last name, and costume teacher. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you had fun.